Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well, having a great weekend so far, and welcome back to a very special CSGO episode, a text interview. Yes, I did say text. We were actually receiving multiple emails from the supposed exploit maker or cheat maker of this past week, which Valve has now patched. Luckily enough, uh, this supposed cheat or exploit was going around into lobbies and spamming not safe for work pictures, as well as uh, some sounds. Along with that, of course, most importantly, what we called injecting cheats into the game of streamers out there. So the supposed maker has been contacting us back and forth. He did deny an actual audio interview interview. He wishes to remain anonymous, but he did answer several of your guys' Twitter questions via text. Now, first of all, we wanted to prove it was actually him on top of that. Uh, like I said before, we received several emails along with this very first email with corrections on our first video on top of that, where he states the actual exploit slash cheat was not patched within 24 hours. It's been a thing for roughly two weeks before it finally got detected and actually got too popular, and that's why Valve then found out about it and then supposedly patched it shortly afterwards. So in my video, I said it was 24 hours, but it's actually been around for nearly two Two weeks according to him and also apparently they never tried to get anyone banned on purpose uh, specifically he talked about himself telling everyone else who had access to it to not seriously damage anything but apparently uh, of course those guys who had copies of this exploit or could use it they did take advantage of it later on there was also no cheat injection as I called it so I mispronounced that it's all panorama provided functions which were running and uh, very lastly they never changed anything of the value of SV cheats so it was kind of commonly at first people thought they were kind of enabling SV cheats so so on and so forth. He corrects that and says they never changed that. So we kind of knew at least halfway he had some knowledge around this. And then very last, he also sent us clips of himself even uh, exploiting the cheat itself and actually using the code as well. As these sets of videos are examples of him using the custom spam inside his Discord and also executing the code in order to randomize the scoreboard, which we then saw in the streamer clip on screen for all of you guys right now. So with all that being said, it seemed pretty obvious he at least was a one of the original, if not founders, the maker of this cheat exploit or at least a user of it early on as well so I do trust him and again I did ask him four of the questions you guys had on Twitter that I found were most uh, probably uh, most relevant to this topic so let's hop into the questions and again thank you all for submitting these questions let's dive a little bit into the head of where this guy was coming from with our first question you know first of all of course the common question out there is why exactly were you doing this and he responded it was fun screwing with people I wanted to see how much was possible and how far I was able to go in terms of breaking the game there was lots to explore I wasn't really interested in reporting it until it was too late anyway. So another ultimate question was why would you not report this to Valve? Valve has had history and precedent of actually giving a large sum of money for people who give out their exploits and, and hacks to Valve instead of abusing them. And so we saw uh, this uh, was a very common question. Of course, this kind of exploit, it could be very well abused, maybe get $10,000, $20,000 out of Valve. He simply had no interest in it. By the time he actually wanted to report it to Valve, it was obviously too late, too exposed, and then was being patched by Valve as well. So we hop into our second question on top of that, also very popular with what exactly he was trying to achieve and he said just personal testing around seeing what's possible there was no specific goal in the end we've seen this in the past with cheat makers exploit makers coders of the sort they really kind of just like to test themselves and that's really the vibe I got from the email exchanges we had with him as well as my team leader talking back and forth with him he seemed to just wanted to set a personal goal of his to actually try and make these exploits and try and further his own personal intelligence and knowledge about this so as weird as it sounds uh, this is a pretty frequent response I, I feel like from their realm of th uh, things being said. Now also, the third question being asked on top of that was how did you find out you could do this? Are you professionally trained in programming or was it more of just a side project? And he did respond by accident, which I never have found these kind of things by accident. He was just going around uh, trying to be a normal harmless bot, like a Discord bot just for CSGO lobbies until at some point he found out on accident you could send malicious lobby messages, uh, so on and so forth. So. I wish I could discover things this cool, although cheating and exploits are not cool, you guys know what I mean, just by accident. Uh, it must be nice being smart. And then very lastly, how much time actually went into doing this and how hard was it for you to do? Uh, which he did respond, I first started working on this in late February, but got busy with other stuff, so left for a bit. Then in mid-April, I continued the project and made the first working version roughly a day later. This was before I knew you could send malicious lobby messages though. The first version, which included this, made roughly a week ago. Uh, regarding the difficulty, it wasn't too bad, but a fun personal challenge, and I learned lots about Panorama in the process. With that being said, this is the interview, the text interview with this guy. I would have loved to talk to him over voice, but I don't blame him for wanting to remain anonymous, even though uh, you know we could have changed his voice or altered his voice in some fashion. If anyone else out there wants to reach out for some kind of voice interview, I love having people on and doing that kind of thing. And uh, with that very last thought, you know, his last answer, he learned a lot about Panorama 
in the process. It does kind of worry me. I don't think this is the last time we will see a guy like this in the CSGO scene. Of course, this latest exploit has now been patched. The, the lobby exploit is what they're calling it has now been fixed, luckily enough. But are these hackers done? Are these cheaters done in CSGO? Not by a long shot. As always, I hope you guys all enjoy your weekend. I will see you back here Monday, breaking down IEM Sydney and much more esports news. Until then, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys soon.